Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Sharp Bros 7 Sins watch. Uh, this is a rather unique watch, as you can tell pretty much immediately by looking at it, um, from Sharp Bros. And I would also like to thank them for loaning me this watch for review. Um, it was really, really cool to get to check it out, uh, so thanks guys. And let's go ahead and get into some size comparisons, give you an idea of how big this watch is. Alright, so here we have it next to a few different watches. Um, the Seiko Samurai, of course the you know, Seven Sins, Orient Symphony 2, and the Mondane Classic Day Date. Um, so we have a 45, a 42, a 41, and a 40. Um, just to compare it real quick to the Samurai, you can see pretty much immediately, um, it, it's a decent bit smaller um, width-wise. Lug to lug, it's actually a little tiny bit bigger. Um, so if you ever try to Samurai, the length uh, across your wrist width-wise is going to be a little bit larger on this, but it's, it's by no means unmanageable. It is next to the Orient uh, Symphony 2. The Orient's a 41. Um, lug to lug's pretty similar on these two. The Orient's just a tad bit smaller um, lug to lug and in diameter, um, so just keep that in mind. And then next to the 40, the Mondane Classic Date 8. Um, again, this watch is a little bit bigger than it is. So this watch overall is pretty sizable. Um, it's not going to be as big as uh, some of your large, you know, 44 millimeter bronze dive watches or anything like that. But it's a pretty decent sized watch. All right, on to what I like about it. So uh, first thing up is going to be just how unique this watch is, and that really starts with the hands, in my opinion. Um, this is by far the most appealing part of the watch to me. Um, are these kind of switchblade-esque, um, you know, knife hands on this watch. Um, if you watch my channel at all, you know that I do like knives a lot. Um, and this kind of brings both of these worlds together uh, to a degree. So you have those really, really cool hands. Again, I can't, I can't state enough how, how awesome these are in person. And they're completely loomed too. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, you also have the kind of dagger, short sword shaped indice of the 12. Um, you do have applied indices for each of the hour markers, um, and they're polished on the side with loom um, on the front of them. You have a kind of weird shaped seconds hand. Um, it is loomed as well. And then you have seven sands, 30 atmospheres, 300 meters automatic sapphire, and you have a red indice down here. <clears throat> So the dial itself is really, really interesting, just looking at those things. But if you look over to the left, um, is another pretty interesting aspect of this watch. This is the, uh, they call it the SINS window. It's kind of a, a date indicator, a day indicator. Um, but it has the, the SINS there instead. So it's instead of the days of the week, this is obviously much, much less practical. Um, but you have, you know, lust, pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and then it kind of loops back. So these will serve as your day. Um, it's not really useful. I'm sure you could find a way to, in, in your head, of course, correlate them um, in some way. But it, it's much more a stylistic um, appeal. And as I've been wearing this watch for the past couple of weeks... I've noticed that a lot. Um, this watch is as much about artistic statement as it is about the utility of the watch. It is a watch, but it's also, I would say actually first and foremost, uh, a fashion piece. Uh, apart from the the amazing dial, there's there's a few other things that I do like about this watch. I don't want to go over that too much. Um, so the case is a nice mix of polished, as you can see here, which is really, really cool, and kind of brushed. Um, all over. The crown is also polished, um, just on the the kind of show side where it sticks out. Um, it does have knurling, so you can get a grip on it. It's actually very, very easy to use. I like the crown a lot. But the mixture of finishing really sets this off. Um, the brushing on the top kind of complements the matte dial, and the polishing on the side kind of gives it a little bit of pop, especially in the in the light. It also comes with a, uh, a travel case and a flask, which you can see in the unboxing video. Those are just nice little touches that are thrown in. And it also includes a NATO strap, 
um, which I will go ahead and pop on and show you that because I actually prefer that one. All right, there we go. So um, in my opinion, this is the much better of the two straps um, in terms of comfort and kind of appearance. It gives the watch a more sporty look for sure, but I don't think this watch is suited to classier environments. I would say the bracelet's more um, subtle, if that's what you're going for. But really, I, I think it, it's best suited with this NATO strap. This thing is super, super comfortable, I've got to say. And it looks amazing on this watch. It really, really pops. Uh, they, they do include this with the watch, so you get both of them, which is super, super generous. But um, yeah, this one's it's more comfortable. It's more aesthetically appealing to me. And it's the one that I wore most of the time. I did wear the bracelet for uh, probably four or five days. Most of the time that was spent on this, um, it's just... I kept coming back to it. It's just a better option in my opinion, uh, and it fits this watch a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the neutral. So first thing up is going to be the movement. Um, so this is using a Seiko NH35, which is a wonderful, wonderful movement. I have it in several of my watches. It's one of my favorite movements, actually. Uh, but this one is running less accurately than any Seiko NH35 that I've tried before. It's not horrible. Um, but if this were my watch, I would be getting it serviced for sure. Um, it runs about 20 seconds a day fast from what I've measured. Um, and that's come down a little bit since I first got it, probably averaging close to 17 or 18 seconds a day fast now. Um, but you can of course go get the serviced for a pretty minimal charge, but I figured I'd go ahead and include it out of the box. This is not the most accurate watch that I've tried. Next up, the case back. I really should have uh, left the bracelet on for this one, but I can kind of pull the NATO out here and show you. So the case back is fine. It's it's that's why it's in the neutral section. It's it's fine, but there's nothing really exciting about it. Um, so all you really have there is the specifications. You know, sapphire crystal, all stainless steel, water resistant, 300 meters. And then you have the sharp rose uh, logo and the little dagger slash short sword thing there. Um, so it it does the job. It's serviceable. It's nothing super super flashy, but that's kind of that's that's completely their decision but it's a little bit boring in my opinion next up the loom so let's go ahead and uh show you what the loom looks like all right so i'm trying to show you as best as i can the loom from this watch um you'll see most of it is this kind of lighter blue color um this is pretty much imperceptible at the moment because the loom is is weak i'm not gonna lie about it um over here in this top corner there is some red loom that comes through and the second hand is typically loomed as well, although those are extremely difficult to see at the moment. Um, the main thing that's going to that's going to be visible and that's going to really stick around is that that uh, blue superluminova that is on most of the watch. So the loom, while being very very attractive in my opinion, is just it's just pitiful. Um, it's next to useless for the most part. Um, the lighter blue loom that's used on it is useful, um, but it's not going to last you know, through the night. It's certainly not enough for diving. Um, and while this is a dive watch, I don't think it's really geared towards that all that much. Um, but the loom is very, very attractive. That's the first thing that I noticed uh, when I turned off the lights the first evening that I had this. I was like, wow, that that particularly red, the area in particular, the red one, um, the loom comes through and it, it looks incredible. I've never seen red loom in person. It was, it was uh, pretty cool. Um, so price-wise, what are you looking at? Um, you're looking at $365. That is a lot for this, in my opinion. Um, or it was a lot, in my opinion. There's a few things that set this apart. Um, the main things being the dial and the hands. Um, so you're paying, you could probably get a Sapphire watch with an NH35 with a Rolex Samariner style case from Microband for 200 bucks. But it's going to be a full, you know, Rolex Mariner homage. At least they tried with this one. Um, they brought some more unique concepts into that. And that's really what you're paying for, in my opinion. So I think the price is okay. It's not stellar. It's not an incredible value. But you get a lot with this watch. Um, and it's just, it's extremely unique. There's really nothing else on the market like it that I've come across. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the dislike. All right, so first up is actually the bracelet. Um, so this is probably the worst bracelet that I've ever tried on a watch. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. 
Um, the first one is this clasp. It is incredibly stiff. Um, it's just not pleasant at all to use. Um, there's no quick release or anything like that. So it's just, it's just not great. Um, it is a press clasp. I really don't care too much about that. Um, but it's just not, not incredible. The next thing that bothers me is this. Um, you can kind of see there. And it's prominent on most of these lengths. And what that is, is that is at least, unless this watch was loaned out to other people before me, um, that is an issue from the factory where the plating for the black did not uh, connect or it didn't adhere properly <laughs> to the to the steel. So it gives you this kind of weird like burnt effect. Um, and it's it's different on all of them. And it is visible when you're wearing it. Um, if you kind of, at least on the bottom of your wrist, when this is kind of wrapped around it, you'll see bits of it poking out. Um, it's not a huge issue. It doesn't, you know, it's not super prevalent. You're not really looking at the bottom of your watch a lot. But it's enough to bother me um, for this price. So just keep that in mind. The bracelet's not incredibly finished. Um, it does look pretty attractive, but that's about it. Um, the The finishing on it's just awful. It, it's it's not very good at all. Next up, the finishing on the watch itself. There's one major issue with the watch, and there's a few smaller ones. Some of the loom on the bezels applied a little sloppily. Um, that's that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. Most of it in general is just fine. You know, it's pretty good finishing. But on this matte black dial, let me go ahead and clean this off a little bit here. On this matte black dial right there, right above the reflection on my finger, you can see there's a white dot. That is on the dial itself. Um, it did take me a little while to notice this, but you can see it very, very clearly right there. Um, kind of in between the blade and the handle of the dagger. That's not okay. And the reason that's not okay is because this is a matte black dial. Um, there's a few other spots on this watch that have that as well. Um, the most notable other one for me is the N. The top left hand corner of the N has another white speck, but that's not nearly as annoying or as apparent as that one there. Now, on most watches, I don't think I would have noticed this, but this is a very flat black dial, and I, I love that about it. It looks really, really cool. But that stands out a lot. Um, that's just poor QC, in my opinion, and uh, definitely needs to be worked on a little bit. The last thing is the crystal. So if you look at this crystal, I'll put my hand behind it so you can see, uh, it's flat. It's very, very flat. It is listed on the website as a double dome sapphire crystal. Now, what that means is, uh, so typically you have uh, a single dome crystal, which is just curved on the outside. That creates distortion when you're viewing the dial. A double dome crystal means there's a dome on the outside and the inside of the crystal. So facing out towards you and then facing down towards the dial. Um, this is not single domed much less double domed. I mean, it is a perfectly flat sapphire crystal. There's no real readability readability issues. There's no AR coating, obviously, but um, that that's really the only issue on the listing that stood out to me, but it is there. This is not a double dome sapphire crystal. This is a perfectly flat, regular sapphire crystal, but it is still sapphire. All right, on to the conclusion. So what do I think about this watch in general? Well, I think it is a very, very unique watch at a decent price um, that for most people is going to be just fine. If you're looking for something different to kind of stand out, here you go. You know, there's there's a lot of other um, watches that, that have their own uniqueness about them, but this one has a bit of, a bit of attitude about it. Um, if you look at the... The website the creator mentions that he seems kind of um and and i i could be very wrong on this he seems kind of like he grew up 
in the uh, the kind of 80s punk scene a little bit. Um, and it definitely translates to this watch. This watch has a lot of attitude, has a lot of style. Um, so if this is your thing aesthetically, if you really, really like this, this is the only watch out there that's going to do it for you. And it does it pretty well. Um, of course, Dad, you know, I have a few nitpicks about it. But if you keep those in mind and they don't bother you or they don't bother you enough to turn you off this watch, go ahead and pick it up. Also, um, once I put out this video, it's going to be the day I record it. Um, you can currently get 10% off of this watch and a free Valentine's Day a NATO strap. I'll leave a link down to that in the description. Um, but that'll save you like 40 bucks off, something like that. And for that, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> but yeah. Um, if you have any questions about this watch or anything, let me know uh, down in the comments, and I'll try to answer those for you. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.